Welcome to our lecture online. In this problem, we're going to use a simplex method to try and solve a minimization problem. Now, the reason why we think it's a minimization problem is because we give us, they're giving us a cost equation and they're asking us to minimize the cost. So obviously we think, okay, we should minimize something here. However, if you look at the inequality symbols here, they say less than or equal to, less than or equal to, and those are the hallmark of a maximization problem. So normally, if you're doing a real minimization problem, you would expect to see greater than or equal to and greater than or equal to in the constrained equations or the ex constrained inequalities, not less than or equal to. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solve it like a maximization problem. However, what we need to do is we need to find the comparable profit function because the profit is the negative of the cost. So we know that P is equal to minus C is therefore equal to 2X plus 3Y. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the equivalent maximization problem. And then once we find the profit, we will then say the negative of that will be the cost for the minimization problem. Now, that's not a standard way of doing minimization problems, but you may run into this, so you need to know how to do those. So let's go ahead and continue. We're now going to put this into a simplex tableau. Notice also that we need to write these into equivalent equations with, with the what we call uh, the slag variables. So these two equations will become as follows. They'll become 5x plus 4y plus our first slag variable is equal to 32. And here we get x plus 2y plus the second slag variable is equal to 10. And then if we take our profit equation and move everything over to the other side, we can say that minus 2x minus 3y plus p is equal to 0. So now we take those three equations and put them in the simplex tableau. That will look as follows. We get a 5, a 4, a 1, a 0, a 0, and then of course we get the 32. And then here, oh, let's go like this. And then over here we get the 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, and 10. And then finally, below the line here, we get the minus 2, the minus 3, the 0, 0, 1, and 0. And now we can go ahead and begin to solve this equation. So we start with the column that has the smallest or the largest negative number. And now we take the ratio of 32 divided by 4, which is equal to 8, and 10 divided by 2, which is equal to 5. And we take the lowest ratio. Again, the way that's done is you go up the column that has the largest negative number and then look at these two numbers right here. You take this number divided by this number, 32 divided by 4, which is 8, 10 divided by 2, which is 5. You take the small of the two ratios and that is the one you're going to pivot around. So you start with this and you want to turn that into a 1, which means you take the second row, R2, and replace it by 1 half the second row. Everything else stays the same. So this becomes 5, 4, 1, 0, 0, 32. Everything here is divided by 2, so this becomes 1 half, 1, 0, 1 half, 0, and 5. And then here, this row stays the same, minus 2, <coughs> excuse me, minus 3, 0, 0, 1, and 0. And so we're going to pivot around this number to get rid of the 4 and to get rid of the negative 3. To do that, we do the following. We take the first row and replace it by the negative of that number, minus 4, times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the first row. We take the third row, we take the negative of this number, which is the positive 3, times the row with the 1 in it. Oh, that would be R2, wouldn't it? R2, and adding it to R3. So be careful. It's the row with the 1 in it, which is the second row, so I need an R2 there. So when we, when we do that, we get the following matrix. Now, let's see here. Let me come up here. So my matrix will look like this. Notice that the second row does not change. So the second row is 1 half, 1, 0, 1 half, 0, and 5. The first row, all right, minus 4 times a half. It's minus 2 added to 5 it gives me a positive 3. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4 added to 4, which gives me 0. Minus 4 times 0, nothing changes. Minus 4 times a half is minus 2 added to 0, which is minus 2. 
zero is nothing changes. Minus 4 times 5, which is minus 20, added to 32, which is 12. Now we take care of the third row. 3 times a half is 1 and a half added to minus 2. That's a minus 1 half, minus 0 0.5, or minus 1 half. 3 times 1 added to minus 3, that's 0. 3 times 0, nothing changes. 3 times a half, that would be 3 halves. That would be oh, 3 times 0 added to 1, that's still a 1. And 3 times 5 added to 0 gives me a 15. All right, I'm not quite there yet because I still have a negative number right here, which means I'm going to go up this column and look for the smallest ratio. 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4, and 5 divided by 1 half is equal to 10. There's my smallest ratio. That means I'm going to pivot around this number. That means I need to make that into a 1. I do that by dividing the entire row by 3. So I take the first row and replace it by one third the first row and the second row, third row don't change so one half, one, zero, one half, zero and five the third row I get a minus one half a zero, a zero, a three over two, a one and a fifteen and now the first row is divided by three so I get a one I get a zero, a one third, a minus two thirds a 0 and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I'm pivoting around this number to get rid of this positive 1 half and this negative 1 half which means I'm going to take the second row and replace it by the negative of that times the row with the 1 in it which is now the first row and adding it to the second row. I'm taking the third row and taking the negative of that which is a positive 1 half times the row with the 1 in it which is our 1 and adding it to the third row. So when I do that, I will get zeros right here. So I'll come up here and I get the following matrix. Notice that the first row does not change, so I get a one, a zero, a one third, a minus two thirds, a zero, and here I get a four. Second row. So that would be minus one half times one is minus one half added to one half, I get zero. Here nothing changes. Minus one half, that would be minus one sixth added to zero, that would be minus one sixth. Minus one half, oh, that would be one third added to one half. One half plus one third is five sixths. That would be zero. And, okay, I get one half, or minus one half times four, that is a two added to five, that gives me a seven. Ooh, let me try it again. Minus 1 half times 4 is a minus 2 added to 5 is a 3. I thought something was wrong there. Okay, so that's a 3. Now I get the third row. So it's 1 half times this added to that gives me 0. 1 half times 0, nothing changes. 1 half times 1 third is 1 sixth. 1 half times this gives me minus 2 thirds added to 3 halves, that's 3 halves plus 2 thirds. Don't really care what that is. This stays as a 1. And 1 half times 4 is, is 2 added to 15, that is 17. Now I'm done because I have zeros right here. The answer is 17, and that this would be the value for x, right? So this is x. This is y, this is my first like variable, my second like variable, and profit. So 1x equals 4, 1y equals 3, and this here is the profit. So there's the solution. When x equals 4 and y equals 3, the profit is 7. But I'm not looking for the profit. I'm looking for the minimum, minimum cost. And since cost is equal to the negative profit, so cost equals negative profit, so it's equal to negative 17, or yeah, negative 17. So the cost is negative 17 when x equals 4 and y equals 3. To check that, I can take my cost equation right here and plug in those variables. So I can say that since cost is equal to minus 2x minus 3y, and x and y are 4 and 3, so then the cost is equal to minus 2 times 4, minus 3 times 3, 
this is equal to minus 8 minus 9, which is minus 17. And sure enough, that matches right there, so we know we have the right answer. Now, this is by all means not a standard minimization problem. This is kind of a strange minimization problem because they do ask for minim minimum cost, but the constraint inequalities have the wrong symbols here. Less than or equal to, less than or equal to, which are associated with maximization problems. So we solve the minimization problems as if it was a maximization problem by saying that the profit equals the negative of the cost. Now in the next two videos, and the videos after that, we will show you what a real standard minimization problem looks like, and there we have to go look for the dual problem and solve it in a different manner. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and we'll show you how to do the next problem.